they're making decisions. They have people in jail, political prisoners in jail. They got the FBI, they got the FDA, they got the CDC, they got the NSA, I mean, CIA, all of them have now joined forces of working for, let's say, the <laughs> to me, it's a joke. I don't participate in that for that reason alone. Dr. Zelenko became a household name when he developed his world famous Zelenko protocol. To make sure that everybody had access to his immune boosting formula, he created Z-Stack, my family's immune boosting supplement of choice. Along with Z-Detox, Z-Flu, and Z-Shield, Z-Stack has helped countless families stay healthy and protected. With every purchase of Dr. Zelenko's products, you also support the Zelenko Freedom Foundation in their tireless work to promote and reinstate medical freedom for all. Click the link down below, use coupon code INSPIRE to save and protect your family today. Hey, hey, Inspired Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, so John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Inspired Conversation. And I got to give you a little bit of a backstory about today's guest. So a few months ago, I get a call from our dear friend, Dr. Christiane Northrup. You all know her. And she calls me up and says, listen, you got to be on this guy's show. He's in Atlanta. His name's Tim. And he's got this amazing show there. And I didn't ask him any questions. I said, okay, I'll do it, Christiane. If you say it, I'll trust it, right? And so I... I'm on his show and him and his partner, Shannon, uh, just a wonderful show that we do together. Uh, just having a good time, you know, talking deep stuff. And a day later, I get a call from him. Tim calls me up and says, hey, we're having this launch party, this huge event down in Atlanta. You want to come and sing a little, talk a little and spend some time with us? And once again, I didn't ask many questions. I said, yes, let's do it. So eventually, Christine and I show up there and I can just tell you, uh, at that event, Tim had gathered a absolutely amazing group of people, some of the highest level truth speakers and freedom fighters uh, and warriors out there. Uh, just absolutely amazing. So that's how we got introduced to Tim's world. So without further ado, let me welcome the man, <clears throat> the man, the myth himself, uh, Tim Ray. He's the founder of United Intentions Foundation and UI Media. Tim Ray, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you, John, and uh, what a pleasure. And I love that you're a yes man, and then you ask questions later. That's that's the way to go through life. <laughs> uh, right. Jump right in and figure it out while you're there. You always ask for forgiveness, right? But uh, no, it was, it, you made the event uh, and your energy, and of course our show is called Raising the Frequency with Tim and Shannon. And our other show we have on the network is called Frequency Wars. So it's all about frequency and, and energy and vibration and raising it. And you sure did. You raised it off the roof, on top of the roof when we had that big event. So I thank you for all that you do and uh, you and your lovely wife and, and your friends. So, um, again, it's my honor to be here uh, speaking with you. Oh, Tim, thank you so much. And thank you for, for joining us today. Uh, you kind of set the stage here. You said Raising the Frequency. That's the name of your new show and and you also i mean you, you you don't just have one show two show you have a whole network the ui media network but um it's always interesting to know where such a journey starts you know we find ourselves in these times of the great awakening and i mean monumental shifts on earth where and when did those monumental shifts begin in your life uh, you know, it, it's really, it's, it's, you, you have to go back. Uh, I'm in my fifties now, but you got to go back, you know, 30 years plus, uh, maybe even 35 plus years. When I was a teenager, I, um, I just was always a curious cat just from day one and more introverted back then. Uh, yet I'd love to be extroverted today. Right. You wouldn't think here, Barry, I'm doing this publicly. Uh, but back then it was more like I was gathering information, for whatever reason, you know, I'm here on this earth to gather information. I'm on a mission, whatever, you know, and I, I just uh, I fell uh, in line with a lot of self-help. You know, this is where kind of my psychology background, my interest in started too as a kid, because as a teenager, you're awkward. You're trying to figure out, you know, what's going on, what's life's meaning and everything. Um, and I was a little bit of a worrier myself. And so I stumbled upon one of Dale Carnegie's books as probably a 16 year old. I don't know if you heard of it. It's called uh, uh, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. And uh, some of the quotes in there just really I just took to living in 24 hour daytime compartments, um, you know, and nothing to worry about. Just go one day at a time, uh, as well as, uh, you know, inspiration is fleeting method is the true way of, uh, con of consistency right and so uh, and then it led me to down this metaphysical road of uh, other 
areas, as well as uh, and when I was in college, I took a I took a world religion course, which uh, up, up until then I was raised Catholic. So all I really knew was Christianity uh, and a specific, you know, mantra of Christianity, a very religious kind of upbringing. Not that I took to it well. I think I upset my um, my priest one time and he kicked me out of convention uh, c- uh, confession when I didn't understand. I couldn't repeat my Hail Marys correctly. I'm like, well, yeah, I think that's the last time I'll be going back there. <laughs> and however, I. Um, I learned that there's so much more in the world that I never knew. And I just took it to like a sponge. I learned all about the, the Hindu religions and the Buddhist and the, and the, and the Islam and Judaism and the uh, Quran. And, and, you know, you learn about the, the Vedas and, and the, and the old, the new Testament. And so you learn all these different things and you find the common denominators, which I always thought was pretty fascinating. I was just connecting the dots. We all, seem to uh, either pray or meditate to a higher power. Some call it Nirvana, some call it Allah, some call him God. We, uh, we, you know, we read the certain books. There's always some type of, there's always a person who's representative from that religion come here to earth to, to, to explain it like Muhammad or Jesus or uh, Buddha. So down the line. So I'm like, well, they can't just be just, a, is that a coincidence? You know, that's just common denominator, all these things. So it kind of then brought me to, um, you know, to a point where I was, um, just learning this and, and eating it up and uh, and just going to college and finishing college. And then uh, reality settled in. Okay. You got to make money in this, in this, in this matrix here, in this paradigm where we live in, you got to now use your career to move forward. I graduated with a, uh, a degree in psychology and in management, a double major. And, uh, and so that kind of led me to a, um, an opportunity to be in a long-term care industry uh, which was uh, nursing homes. I, and I'd never been in nursing before. You know, I was like 22 years old, 23, somewhere around there. And I got an opportunity to be in an administrator training program. And that's what started my my focus. I always had that background of, of learning about, you know, metaphysics and, you know, extraterrestrials and aliens. And I was even a member of MUFON uh, back in the day, Mutual UFO Network. Have you never heard of that before? But you know I, that was my exposure, and then I then I went into the reality of the Matrix and started doing the career ladder to that process, and and kind of not forgot or left it behind. Just put it on the just put it on the shelf, and I still live my life with understanding the power of intentions and and how we co create our reality. Uh, but I never really put a lot of that into use until we started the foundation years later, two thousand nine. A big, big story, and and kind of like usual, it's it's it sounds like you are you know you started out really uh, not really being fully programmed into the matrix, discovering all these things and being very open to them, then kind of stepping a little bit into the matrix, and then saying, oh yeah, this this might not be fully me here. Let me let me uh, see what else we can do here. One of the things, Tim, before we go into the subjects of the day and the things that you believe. Uh, move us now and are really a significant. One of the things I noticed as we've gotten to know each other better is you are a magnet for uh, certain people. You attract certain people into your space that want to share truth, that come from a deeply spiritual place and that are not shy uh, to speak out. Those are kind of the qualities I noticed in the, in the uh, congregation at your house when we were there together. How, how does that happen for you? Is it, do you, do you want to pull these people into your experience? Do they just show up? I mean, we had the likes of, you know, uh, Daniel Brinkley and, and we had Dr. Christian Northrop and we had uh, Dr. Right. Brian Artis and we had many other high caliber people there. You know, it's how does that happen for you? Yeah. You know, uh, just lucky, I guess, you know, I, I really, you know, it's a good question to ask. And I wasn't always, I, I always, I, I, if I had to like attribute to something about my personality or my energy, let's say energy, because everything's vibration and frequency, um, is that I had my curiosity has more of a, I consider a, a pure intention behind it. It's like, I don't want to, I'm not curious to see how I could just benefit from a situation to maneuver. And trust me, I, even my career, as I ran in the matrix in my career of long-term care, uh, running nursing homes, assisted livings and start my own home care company is I, <clears throat> I excel very quickly through it, but because I've not, because I wanted this, the, you know, the make the money and do all that. It was because I wanted to learn about it. You know, I was just curious about learning about it and being mastering it. That was kind of my intention was to 
figure it out, master it, and then move on to something else. Like I never, it's like general, uh, you know, general Patton, you, you know, never look back and never, never take a sit, sit on old territory. You always want new, new, new area to keep going forward on. And so I think my intention behind what I wanted to experience attracted the people like you, the people like Christian and, and Danny and everybody else, uh, because, because I was matching their frequency, you know, and they were matching my frequency. And so I think that's, and, and if I look at you and I look at, I look at, um, Christian and, and even Daniel, you know, Mr. Uh, you know, uh, badass Daniel Brinkley, I, there's pure intention in them. And I see that, I see that all the time. And, and I think that's where the frequency matching occurs. And just like Einstein says, you know, you want to experience a certain reality, just match that frequency of the reality that you want to experience. And, you know, and, and that's, that's the law of attraction. That's the law of, of the universe that I believe that we've been experiencing. And, uh, and I think that's probably if, if there was a, um, a magic formula for me, I would say that's probably the, uh, it is, it's my intention, my, my intention behind why I do things. And I think that's what people like yourself probably recognize, maybe either consciously or unconsciously. Both, to be quite honest. And, you know, when I hear you and, and in our conversations that we shared over a few days, one thing became very, very clear from you, from everyone. Uh, when we had those conversations 10, 15 years ago about the problems in the world, about the, the falsehoods, the lies, all of that, um, it was sort of, we, we talked about problems. Today, we are literally at war. We, we are in the midst of the Third World War. It might not fully play out kinetically yet, but it's playing out on all other levels. What do you see some of these battlefields are? I mean, you call it frequency wars. You call it raising the frequency. You realize what we're in. Where do you see currently the battlefields and, and where do these people, like you just mentioned, where do they um, fall in line there? You know, it's so interesting, John, because I go back and forth from being my warrior self, whatever, you know, uh, 3D energy that I'm here to do or live if, with this past lives, past lives I live. Um, I, I'm, I'm fine. You know, Hey, uh, I love the second amendment. I, I got my guns. I got my food. I know I'm ready for whatever battles next. Right. That's an aspect of me that I see. Uh, and, uh, and preparation, a lot of it's driven in fear. You know, I mean, I won't, can't deny that. And I, and I think the bigger picture though, you know, the bigger picture with these wars of what I see occurring is that they're necessary. And I have to remind myself that all the time as I lose myself in the matrix and in this 3D world and playing that warrior game, whatever that may be, I have to remind myself that I'm a mighty powerful spiritual being. I'm infinite awareness. And if I practice on a monthly basis or on a daily basis that like, what's it, what am I like if I'm an infinite awareness, if I'm infinite of knowing everything and I'm projecting Tim right now, talking to John, who's another avatar projection, and we're sitting, we're sitting uh, in our comfortable beds right now in heaven somewhere, you know, playing our avatar joystick of who we are here. I have to remind myself, I am that infinite awareness, and that um, that I'm everything that I'm doing is 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 for the experience of it all. And so, as I kind of live the two worlds, where part of me wants to be the warrior, and the other part has this kind of knowing, this of uh, being the observer of what's going on here. Uh, I believe that's the. I don't say the mission goal or the purpose because we all have different reasons why we're here. And it may just be as simply as just experiencing it all right. Uh, this three dimensional world to touch, feel the five senses to, to engage, to be totally unaware of who we truly are, uh, of our, our connection of being of God, being part of that flow and energy, that collective. So I, I battle with that, but I, I hope that what's happening with everyone else is the same thing that's happening within me is that we're going to realize that, that the darkness, that ugly side that we want our warrior and the good and the good hats, the white hats, whatever you guys want to call it, are battling the black hats, that they're all needed. We need to see this darkness for us to wake up to the light. Right. And so the darkness is just as important as the light. And intellectually, I may know that. When I go up against a um, you know demonic energy or a being or an extraterrestrial at some point, will I perceive and see that? Will I be that light that will engulf them and, and, and see the beauty in that as well? Or will I run away in fear and try to destroy it, whatever it may be? I don't know. I mean, time will tell. I think that we're in Super Bowl now. This is Super Bowl time. 
I think our souls are here for this reason. And I think this is an opportunity for us to wake up to whether we're going to use fear as our way of disconnecting and dividing, and continuing with this and seeing the separation and duality of life, or we're going to move into a, a, a unity, a united intention of realizing that we are mighty, powerful, spiritual beings and that we create our reality and we could shift it. We shift our reality through the power of our intentions and awakening to the awareness that we are infinite awareness. Now, that's easily said, right? I could talk about that forever. But think about that. If what I'm saying is true, we are infinite awareness. We're just not aware. We're separate from it. And uh, and we could bring in religion. You know, you could bring in Jesus. You could bring whatever you want. I'm just looking at a much higher perspective of a viewpoint for this moment of, of a conversation. But there, there is there is a way of how we uh, we decide we decisions we make and the actions that we take here in this world will determine what experiences we will have. And one of the things I've learned, and, and I'm sure you want to probably talk about this, is that everything that we're experiencing right now, right now, uh, what we're seeing in the world and everything, or everything that you do every day, really is meaningless. And what I mean by meaningless, and I know it's a shocker, but you're like, people wake up, my God, I, I believe this belief. Now all this is happening. I, I took these shots and now this is happening. It's like, this is so meaningless. Life's meaningless. Why am I going to work? Why am I putting food on the table? Why am I busting my backside, you know, 12 hours a day? This is silly. This is, and, all, and this is what it, what it really is. Well, it was meant to be that way. Everything's meant to be meaningless because it's neutral. See, we're here as mighty powerful spiritual beings, I believe, is to, to bring meaning to the meaningless, neutral way of life. We're to be, we're, and that's the beautiful part about it. As, as scary it may seem that everything's meaningless, we bring the meaningfulness into our day to day. It's up to us to raise the frequency. It's up to us to be able to put the meaning into it. And no matter how many steps we take back, and I screw up all the time. I get lost into my fears and my anxieties and, and what's going on at any given time. I mean, I, and I know that. But I also know back, deep back in what my belief system is, is that I create the meaning. I can create the frequency. I can raise the frequency and I can lower the frequency unconsciously or, un or consciously. And that knowing just knowing that fact i think gives me the um and perhaps others who do believe that the uh the confidence and the motivation to continue on in the midst of all this perceived chaos that we're that we're experiencing and most likely will be experienced a hell of a lot more in the very near future and i believe that i'm i'm here for that and i believe you're here for that and i believe your viewers are here for that right now too otherwise we would not be having the synchronistic experience as i speak these words from my lips do you believe tim because you just you just went deep right you just went off the deep end and i love i love that because that's that's how we roll here anyway so um as you jump this cliff do you believe and do you know maybe there's a difference in the two that there is a grand creator something that people call god and that there is in fact, purpose to every little aspect of creation and um, that we are created in the image of God, which means endowed with that divine spark of creation. Do you believe that this, these things are true? And on, uh, you know, on the other side of that equation, that our free will determines Everything that you just said, but but more so, our free will determines whether we look at this uh, as a, a transitory experience or something very, very purposeful and important. Well, you know, it's a brilliant question and a deep question. You know, what is God, right? It's it's a it's a forever question to to whatever degree. Um, and I can only tell you from my perspective. Uh, I never heard God in my ears. Like many people have, I never heard Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad. I never had any really paranormal experience on that level to whatever degree. Everything, the decisions I've been making throughout my life has been through, I would say, probably my intuition or my, uh, you know, my, my integration of my five senses and, and my spiritual connection. Um, but how I would define God for me, and I, and I, this is a question I pondered and still ponder to this day uh, as I grow, because what I knew and, and who I was five years ago is not the same person I am today. And five years from now, we're not going to be the same people either, uh, hopefully, right? That means we're progressing, growing, and we're 
and we're, um, you know, assisting our awakening of infinite awareness. So I, I see God, and there's two perspectives. I'll give you my big perspective, what I really believe, and then I'll give you a small perspective. I think a lot of people fall into the trap here. My big perspective is I see God as more of a, of a frequency, a frequency of energy that we can tap into. And when we're feeling God within us, let's say, use the word God in us, it's a, it's a matching frequency. And it's the most powerful frequency there is. This frequency, some people call it Christ energy. Some people call it whatever it may be. But this frequency of energy is so powerful um, that it, can, it, it, it creates. It creates worlds. It creates everything. It's the creator of all. And is it a personified being? Is it made in our likeness like that? I would probably say no, only because I think it is in the sense that we are all, we're all made up of energy. Quantumly, we're energy and vibration. We don't look like that. You know, I mean, you may be a very handsome cowboy with your hat on right now, but your energy, if somebody is able to look at you as your true energy from a quantum level on a microscopic or a micro, on a, another frequency level, you would be this waving different colors of whatever it may be. And that's not me just saying that. That's really science, quantum science, catching up to really everything's vibrating and and at different hertz and different frequencies. But but to God, if I tap into the, that powerful frequency, if I'm aligned and it's subtle too, because you have to really be, so, you have to be clear and you have to be still and you have to be peaceful and you have to be in a state of love, because it can't recognize it if you're not in love, right? And so <clears throat> when you're in that state of love and vulnerable in that state of love, I think we tap into it. I think people have glimpses of that throughout their lives. I think we have moments of that in time. Uh, some people often stay in that frequency of love and others. And you can know that you know those people when you run into them, like, wow, this person's really tapped in. Um, so I would say that I, I, I see it more as an energy. Is it a collective energy of all the individual souls that are here on this earth that are made of a God? Or like, for example, I, I great example I ever heard was that we are the ripples in the ocean. God's the ocean and we are the ripples in the ocean. We are we're unique, identified ripples and we're not the whole whole ocean, but we're defined. But we're made up of the same substance. We're made up of the same composition of God. And that's when I think when we tap into that aspect of who we are, we connect to that frequency. Now, to the other part where a lot of people that I think is, I consider more of an indoctrination, what I've learned through my my uh, looking at past history and things like that. And this is when, um, you know, if you want to go there, let me know. We can talk about some extraterrestrial stuff here. But uh, I think when we look at uh, a lot of religions in the past have been um, manipulated by man but also maybe manipulated by beings not from here uh and whether that's genetically altering human beings or you know uh that's uh, manipulating the different books and things like that to make people believe that your salvation is always outside of yourself and i see and, and and i think you look at the old testament and things like that you will see that you need a sacrifice to get god's approval and then you can be happy for that moment OK, until the next sacrifice you have to do. And I think that's the um, the old view of outside, your, your salvation is outside of yourself. Now, I believe my belief is that Jesus came back to show the light, say that's not your salvation is from within. This, the, your awakening is from within. You will do much more than I because this is what I was able to do. When I'm tapped into this God's frequency source, Jesus was saying, in my opinion, and I'm tapped into it. And when I'm when you're tapped into that frequency source, anything is possible. Anything's possible. It's not that you need to give your energy to something outside of yourself or somebody else or personified being, a, a man with a, a you know a beard sitting in the middle of a cloud somewhere, or Zeus, whoever it may be, but it's it's you tap into this frequency of whatever this is. And I would never even try to define God at that point, because I think once we start defining God, we lose its meaning. And then, and then when you're tapped into that, you could do anything and you could be anything. And, but the key is it has to be about love. It has to be about love unconditionally. It has to be about joy. It has to be about beauty, it has to be all these meta meta values, you know? Uh, and, and to me, that's, I would have to say the closest I come at this point in my life. And then, you know, five years from now, I may be telling you something totally different. God's the Anunnaki, e e extraterrestrials, you know, but as of right now, 
I believe it's a frequency and how we how we connect it with we have to match it to to, re, to reach it. All right. All right. Thank you, Tim. Listen, here's I give you my favorite quote and I want to get your take on this because I'll, I'll connect it to your life and your current purpose as you see it. My favorite quote is before enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. And that's not a full quote. The full quote is actually, and I'm just explaining it quickly, before you are enlightened, if you will, you chop wood and you carry water. And during your enlightening season in your life, when you you know open yourself up to it, you see, oh my God, it's not just chopping wood and carrying water. This is this is divine. This is everything. And then after you've integrated enlightenment, you realize, oh, it's really just chopping wood and carrying water. The, the whole purpose of this, the, the whole purpose of this exercise is to recognize that the mundane is the sacred and the sacred is the mundane and there's really no difference in, in, in it all. Now, when we speak of the, the current times, and that's why you even have a UI media network, you are talking about the things that are happening and you're talking about the bigger connection. What is your chopping wood and carrying water right now? What is important to you? What do you see as significant and what uh, moves you and motivates you, angers you, inspires you currently? Oh my God, you, you got an hour. All right. So uh, I would say top what my main motivation is. Uh, um, I'm a, I love the United States Constitution. Uh, to me, the, the First Amendment, when you go back and I've researched, researched it extensively, the whole purpose of the First Amendment, how it, it was created. And, and here we are reliving the days of when we were back in the, in the America, back in the 1700s, how we lost our freedom. And we and the freedom of religion was the first thing to go, you know, Penn, you know, uh, Penn, who Pennsylvania came from, Governor Penn, Pennsylvania. He was put in jail and, the, and these guys were in jail and the, and, the, and, the, and the judges from England were basically there's no juries. And they, they were basically telling them that, you know, oh, there were jurors, but they were telling them that, you know, we're not going to let them out of jail. And they're being tortured. Him and a bunch of people are being tortured until they because they believe God was different than the God of England. And they, you know, they were just saying, it's, we believe different things about God, right? Just like I did. Like, if I said what I said to you a minute ago um, about what I believe God is, I would have been put in jail and uh, considered, uh, you know, uh, idolatry or treason, whatever it may be, you know, and I could have been killed for saying what I just said. And, and so that when you look at the history, you realize that we were fighting that back then and we created the first amendment which which the freedom of religion led to the freedom of assembly which led to the freedom of speech and so on down the line and so to me that is one of the most critical aspects that drives me each day is that when if we right now give in to these satanists to these psychopaths to these 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 beings that are manipulating and condemning and, and intimidating and uh imprisoning uh, politically imprisoning people right now in America who are uh, every day they're they're passing legislation to take away our our amendments rights and everything else. I get very angry uh, and upset because I realize and then and then what upsets me more so not that they're doing it because I know their game plan why they're doing it. It's very obvious because they have to shut down the First Amendment to get their the totalitarian world view of one world order and the communistic uh, model to in place to just control people and make them slaves, um, the ones that they don't kill off. And so, so when I, when I see that, and, but more so when I see the people go along with it, they put the masks on and, and they follow the orders and they, they, they do whatever they're being told because they're scared. They don't want to upset the social card or they don't want to upset the, the authority or whatever it may be. I get upset at them the most because they're not exp and they don't want that if they knew what their their actions were doing was going to lead to their enslavement they would not take those actions they're just in fear and when you're in fear you can't think straight and when you can't think straight you're gonna you need somebody to tell you what to do and that's the whole game plan that these these satanists know they know the psychology behind that and that's why they do it each time that's why they gear it up and make it look so obvious that they're doing being fear monitoring because they know majority of the people are going to go along with it and that to me is when you don't exercise your right for your freedom of speech that we have still to this day in the United States, to whatever degree as it's being, you know, people are being murdered and people are going down the road of, of being uh, taken out, uh, marginalized, blackmailed, whatever it may be. As we go down that road, 
still, if we don't exercise our freedom of speech, our right to speak our truth, whatever that may be, we will lose it. And we are losing it every day as a legislation they're passing in Florida and everywhere else they're doing now. And that to me drives me and drove me to invest whatever I had into a network to get our truth out. And I don't care. Like, I don't care if you talk, if I, I would bring a Satanist on and I let him say his speech and I let him say whatever he wanted to say. I would challenge him. I would go through that process, but I wouldn't condemn that man or woman to where you need to shut them up and you need to get rid of them because that's their freedom of speech as warped and uh, as as misguided and as godless it may seem that's their right to freedom of speech and i would defend their lives to speak their truth and if everyone had that belief john if everyone understood how important how critical for us to be able to step up and share our truth whatever that may be and defend their truth even if you vehemently disagree with it we would have a world of next step world where I believe it's a spiritual uh, awakening. We would, th that freedom leads to spiritual awakening. And that's where we are right now. We're being forced to spiritually awake because of the darkness. This is all around us coming down and squeezing us. Don't you feel like right now we're in a, in, in a star, star Wars movie where you're in the dumpster and the walls are closing in and Chewbacca is trying to open up the door and, and, and we're closing in. But it's, it's forcing us to go within ourselves to wake up, which is a good thing, but may not seem Tim, like on the, on the other side. Let me stop you right there. You know by now I have never seen a Star Wars movie. Oh, jeez. I have never seen a Star Wars movie. I, I, I forgot. You're right. And this is listen, next time you come down, Jean, we're, I'm doing a marathon with you, okay? And you could actually get, predict what's happening today based on the Star Wars episodes. It's a documentary, just so you know, all right? I understand, and I, and I know you said we could still be friends after you learned that I'd never seen a Star Wars movie. <laughs> and I appreciate that, Tim. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> others weren't so kind. Um, well, that you know, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening to you, and what I hear is actually, if if you want to put a label on it, I hear libertarian, right? And a lot of the people that um, are around, in it, it's a very libertarian worldview. And if you don't know, it's very different from the liberal worldview. <laughs> it's actually quite on the other side of things. Um, but when I hear you speak, I, I notice that there is also a, a, you know, a political spirit inside of you. You're not one of those people that is like disconnected from this process completely. You you think about it, you watch the people in the arena. And I appreciate that because I believe part of the human agency is that we need to get involved in all areas, not, uh, you know, kind of cherry pick, oh, this is what's comfortable and I'm just going to ignore the rest. So when you look at the political arena, uh, do you see any um, do you see any light in that arena? First of all, and 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 second of all, if you see any light in that arena, where should we look to find it? Uh, God, man, you are really good at this. So uh, brilliant question, and yes, I do see light. I see light, perhaps not the same light that you or others may see where they think the white hats are coming in to save the day and we have to sit back and- Whoa, and, 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 whoa, whoa, you know. whoa, 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 Tim, 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 Tim. I'm not a hopium guy. <laughs> I'm not a hopium oh, guy. Good, this good, is good, the white hat. No, 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 no. Right. We're white hats, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, good, good. So, but there are folks out there, good people I love, who are just hoping that that this, these people in the political system are going to come, and I don't want to get into names because it's so divisive, is uh, in the system is going to come in and save the day, and then we could go back to things being um, hunky-dory again, right? And I, I see every day people waking up to that. They're waking, oh, my God, well, maybe they're not telling me the truth. I put all my, you know, all my energy into uh, watching, uh, you know, Fox News. Whatever. Maybe they're not telling me that. So I, pe I see people waking up to the game plan that this is a good cop, bad cop routine. And we're caught into a, uh, a psyop that's bringing, that's bringing um, people right off the cliff just in a different way. Uh, and I, I do see that. Uh, and, and to me, that gives me hope. Um, and, uh, and I think that's something that's, that you're going to, as a, to give all your viewers out there who are looking for an outside savior, I think it's been indoctrinated into us, even from our religions, somebody else will come save us, right? And honestly, and this may sound blasphemy on many, many levels, but I don't believe that was Jesus's sayings that he's going to come back here and save the day. I think Jesus, Jesus's point was back then was that you need to wake up yourselves within yourselves 
and realize how powerful you are, do what I'm doing, you could do that and more so. I think that was the final message. Not that I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to come here, you know, uh, thousands of years later and save your asses one more time. You know, all I know that could be a, a extraterrestrial psyop indoctrination. Who knows what happened there? But I believe that is the lesson learning that we're, where we're learning is that we gotta feel the confidence and understand how powerful we are. I mean, we are so powerful, even on an unconscious level. If what I'm saying is true, think about this. If you are, if you are, we are infinite awareness. We are our spiritual selves sitting somewhere with God or the collective, how you want to find it right now in bed in heaven. Let's just make it simple like that. Like I said earlier, we're not who we're, we, this is not who we are. This is a small a fractal of what we are. And because we're disconnected from that knowing, because we don't realize we are that powerful, we're manipulated by energies and beings that are all around us who do not have that connection or not choosing to be connected to that, right? And so they're trying to feed off on us here in this world and beyond, or this dimension and beyond. And because we're not aware, we allow it to happen. And how do we see that in the day to day? We see it through our addictions. We see it through our bad choices. We see it through all these energies. And, and it may be entities feeding off on that and directing us and manipulating us energetically, right? Because everything's energy. But we should not ever be concerned about that because we are that person in bed in the God area knowing what's going on, just not telling our little fractal self what's going on because they want us to figure it out ourselves, our way back to our spiritual understanding and our power. And that's what I believe Jesus and many others come here to share and tell us that, that we can make that change and difference. And that's where I see the hope. I see people waking up, hopefully to that, on a daily basis. And to me, when we unite our intentions of all these people who are of God, who realize how mighty powerful spiritual they are, as we gather our, our frequency of like-minded souls, as we do, like we did at the Raising the Frequency event, as we gather everyone together and we unite our intentions, there's an exponential energetic response when two more people come together. We know about that in the Bible says that in, it, when two more people come together in prayer, Intention is the same thing to me. It's when two more people come together in united intention, there's an exponential energetic response that occurs. Exponential. And imagine thousands, millions of people coming together. That exponential energetic response will come in light and love. When they come together in that, I believe that's when we do start raising frequency and we see a shift. We see a change in our world. And we shift to a frequency of light and love. And I believe that's really the bottom line. Now, I can say that with all full confidence. Do I live that every day of my life? Do I get caught up in the fear? I mean, God, I'm in the trenches, like you said. I'm in the trenches seeing all the darkness, the sex trafficking, the satanic rituals. And we go deep, dark into that in all our shows. And it's, it's easy to fall into that fear mode and get paranoid and get worried and all that. But always remember, I, be, I believe, always remember that. I am an infinite awareness and I am not that person that's lost in fear. And I can always go back to my understanding of who I really am at any time. And that gives me solitude and that gives me peace. And that gives me the ability to keep doing what I'm doing today. You know, there's a, there's a, I think a task or a purpose to when, when you go through an awakening, when you awaken to the true nature of who you really are, and when you then go into these dark places, like you say, it is to shine your light there. And that's the only way you can actually maneuver and navigate these places. Otherwise, none of us are of any use, uh, you know, and we're just part of the problem then. Um, the, the thing that, that you said and pointed out in so many words really is, is kind of the core message uh, at Inspired here. And what Christine and I are always inspired to share with people, it is uh, absolute 100% self-reliance and personal responsibility. And that's the, those are the, the, the practical terms for a spiritual knowing that we are beings of free will. And that if you want to look at the ultimate gift we've been given, that is that free will. We've already been given everything that is needed. And so I agree with you that the, the idea of Christ returning is really the idea of the re remembering of that consciousness, the remembering of what that means and how it was instilled apparently at one point in one man so strongly that it could inspire uh, billions of people throughout history. So I, you know, I, I see that similarly. 
that being said, um, we, as I said, we are, I think we are tasked right now to apply ourselves to all aspects of our shared human story here. And that includes the spiritual development just as much as the practical stuff, right? So I will ask one more time because it's interesting. We're having an election season right now. It's it's in heat. It's already heated up. Will we even make it to a 24, 24 election? And how significant do you think that process currently is for the, the big picture? Or do you say, no, actually, it doesn't really matter all that much? Uh, well, uh, again, I, I'm going to sound like a little Debbie Downer now, but let's just let's just get real. OK, the last president that was actually I mean, even JFK was selected. Most presidents, you'll know, in our lifetime were selected, not elected. There have been manipulation on so many levels. And the manipulation today versus then is worse. It's got they, they got smarter and better at the at this manipulation of our votes because they have to keep the illusion that people have a power to put people in who they don't want or do want, right? Uh, and I'm talking about Trump and the rest of them. Trump select, everyone's been selected, all right? And when you realize that, you go down that road and you, now you look at the Dominion machines and you look at how they're, um, you know, they're siphoning votes and never been addressed, like <laughs> never addressed the Dominion machines, but he said he did all this <laughs> cleaning up. He cleaned up like, you know, who got driver's license and things like, but he never addressed the real issue, how they're <laughs> within the computers so you they'll know exactly who'll win every election on local levels and big levels right so so it, to me it's a joke i don't participate in that for that reason alone not that other ones shouldn't because you do want to keep a perception up but i'm more like you know like i let them all do their thing and let it be obvious that they're, they're select instead of you voting if nobody voted and right, and the one person voted, and and they all and they all went for ten people voted. They all went for the bad guy, right? Whoever it was, then you would know that how how obviously the <laughs> is um. Crap. However, the part of the what's happening now in the political arena, we what's what's scary, I believe, is that we have a very communistic deep state is overtly running things. I know you want to say the satanic, the cabal, whatever you want to call it. They're making decisions. They have people in jail, political prisoners in jail. They got the FBI. They got the FDA. They got the CDC. They got the, the NSA. I mean, CIA. All of them have now joined forces of working for, let's say, the right? At least working for themselves and are doing things not best or not, let's just say, they, the Constitution is in their way. And they're going to have to take out the First and Second Amendment pretty quickly to be able to really move their authoritative And what I see is the manipulation of what's going on is that this is the last of the political arena. They're going to want to go from no more national politics to a order. They already broke the world down. They had this in plan for decades now. If you, you, don't, you don't have to be a, a, new v, a movie network um, uh, person to be able to know that. Just go check it out yourself. Uh, they have moved this, this whole new world order, the Agenda 30, whole plan in place, 45, for a long time, and they're maneuvering this as we speak. No one's stopping it. The, the, the Republicans and the Democrats here in the United States are, I believe, what my, my research and conclusion is, they're all working together. They're all working together for the new world order, and they're moving this extreme in place. They're letting this far left extremist thing happen now with you identify as a bear or identify as a kitty cat, as a kid. They're allowing children now to be mutilated. Uh, mutilate themselves they're grooming them as a young age to, to see just to, to be confused and then they mutilate their bodies and then regret in their early suicide it is so sick this far left but it's being done i believe they're creating such an extreme far let's say left or far um craziness of anarchy like you could do whatever you want free will right that will um to create a pendulum to start swinging back to this far right this very controlling uh, 1984 world. In fact, people are going to be so far disgusted. And as you see, and many of our friends, they're disgusted with those going on. They want something to be done, right? And rightfully so. However, the game plan is not to bring it back into balance. The game plan is to bring it such an extreme far right perspective that people will be asking. There's so much chaos. They'll be asking for order asking for the new order and they already have every system in place from the monetary uh, the digital currency to the to the religion to the one world religion now they got in place to the everything the one world government they got un soldiers already down in mexico coming up here and it's they have everything all laid out 
it's such a well orchestrated because they have these people on the right and the left convincing everyone that they're fighting each other one's helping one's hurting they're all working together so i don't see this stopping and not until people wake up to when we get to this far extreme right where you're going to have basically a, a hand's maiden tail or tail maiden's hand i can't remember the name of the movie a but where people be, girls be wearing like, what maiden's what is it handmaid's tail i think handmaid's tail yes Yes, exactly. Where people wear masks and they'll be used for make, making babies because we have, have just went down the road of making people infertile and we'll realize that soon enough. And I think that that's when this real, real control, the real fear and chaos that's going to come with this new order, this far, this far controlling order because of the chaos being created here is see to me, it's all set up. So my what I share on our shows on Frequency Wars and even on Raising the Frequency is don't fall for this plan. You know the game plan. This is a, this is a sting operation. The good cop, the good cop, bad cop routine being played, creating all this chaos. And they're going to they're going to hang out. The Bidens they are going to hang out to, to dry the, the gates and all these players that you see in the media that people don't like the musks and everyone. They're going to hang them out to dry because they're the players to bring in the new order. And then you're gonna have this really person coming in, um, very charismatic, whoever it may be, a world leader, and, and he's always for goodness and love and everything else. And they're gonna bring in this new world order, which is gonna be the worst thing that ever could happen. And that game's being played out as we speak. And the more people wake up to that game, I think the sooner we can, we can get to the point where we don't have to be that way. Because I only see the answer, this is the answer. I only want to answer is that we wake up to our divinity, we wake up to our divinity that we won't need politics anymore. When we're so connected to our own spirituality, politics will not be needed. When you interact with another soul like you and I, we won't need to have rules and, uh, and, 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 and engagement on how to handle things because we're spiritually going to be doing the, the best thing for each other. It's going to be a natural uh, uh, elevation of each other. You're not going to need that. So I believe politics is dead. I think we should leave all of it. Even the Constitution of the United States, it was a great stepping stone for us to get to the next level. And the next level is our spiritual awakening. And as spiritual beings, all that stuff will go away. And I think that's how we have to reroute this new world order of taking in this one world control. Either we hijack that to wake people up to our spirituality or we reroute that direction that the new world order is going in to what we need to do to wake up to our own divinity and uh, love and uh, unconditional um, understanding of each other on a, on a human hu humanitarian level never seen before. Tim, I had a bunch of more questions for you today, but I think <laughs> I think we landed at a good first base, right? Not any, uh, yeah. not the other kind of first base, but I think we landed at a good first base. Yeah. And I think what's really important is for us and uh, any conversation, anything to us must be or land at a point of inspiration. The point of inspiration that you sharing and have been sharing throughout this conversation for me is return to your own empowerment. It is a spiritual connection, yes, but it means what can I do in my world to um, improve, to raise my frequency, to elevate my consciousness. And I think th that's the most important message that we could bring out and all these avenues, right, that we're using uh, are, are kind of leading to that base. So I, I want to thank you for that and amplifying that message. Uh, on a different note, where can people hear more from Tim Ray and uh, where can they learn more about your work that you do? What's the best place to find you online? Um, go to uh, unitedintentions.com uh, or even .org or even .net. You can, you can reach it all there. Um, and go to unitedintentions.com and you can see our sh we have multiple shows going out. We have uh, uh, Frequency Wars, which is my show I do by myself, which is hard-hitting evidence of what's going on in the political arena, in the world arena, in the spiritual arena, in the satanic agenda arena, the new world order arena. We, 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 we touch everything and we're not scared of going anywhere where the truth takes us. Uh, as well as Raising the Frequency with Tim and Shannon, my co-host Shannon uh, McVeigh, she's... Um, she keeps me laughing and keeps me uh, showing up every Tuesday morning. Uh, it's from 8 to 10. You can catch it there as well. 
Um, and it's a fun, it's a, it's a two hour show, uh, multi, incredible guests such as yourself and others. Uh, we have two guests each, each show. And then we have our different segments breaking down on, on, uh, the topic of the day. We stay pretty much focused on that one topic and we explore all different sides of it. Uh, we bring laughter and joy and fun to it as well. Um, as well as getting some good news out that per, perhaps people aren't hearing. Um, and then we have also other, uh, we call exclusive content or hot topics, uh, like Dr. Brian artist and Dr. Tal Braun, we just launched a new show on there and it's, wow, we did a documentary on it. And so first series is out now. Uh, you can see that also on there. It's called uh, the Vax Venom uh, cover-up. Uh, just, wow, people are like, like, I can't believe this is really what's going on and we're not being told the truth. Not even in the truth movements telling the truth in the, in the, in the medical field. So, um, so this is stuff that you're, you're getting only really at the UI Media Network. Um, so check out uimedianetwork.org.com. And you'll be able to uh, navigate yourself through there and and see exactly um, exactly what uh, what we're up to. And we have new content coming out all the time. We have uh, we have a lot of lot of like we have um, disclosure for extraterrestrial stuff coming out. We have uh, the, the the Bryans who actually fought uh, Anton Levey and, and took him out of this world. Uh, coming on there. We have just unique variety of truths from everyone. And whether we agree or disagree with it, it's fascinating. And um, and we share it and give people a platform where they could get the full range of truth, whatever that may mean to you, and not be censored. We're uncensored and independent. We can't be bought out. We're not controlled by anyone. We, we're not intimidated. If at any point we're taken down, we'll just walk away and do something else, right? If we're able to, so uh, so it's just my point is join now, get involved that you can at unitedintentions.org and .com, and you'll be able to uh, see what we're up to, and uh, you know, and follow your own truth. They maybe put some great content on there that we want to, that you want to see. Fantastic, Mr. Tim Ray. Thank you so much, Inspire Tribe. Go check it out. Uh, watch the Frequency Wars, raising the frequency, and all the other great content on UI Media. Uh, Tim's here to stay. We noticed this. Uh, he's has, he's got a great team around him, and uh, you know you're going to hear a lot more. I think all over the place from Tim Ray. Tim, thanks again for taking the time today and joining us. It was a great honor. Like I said, it really was all my honor. Thank you, John. Thank you, and Inspire Tribe. Thank you so much for watching, for being with us. You know we love you. We appreciate you, and we'll be back with you again very very soon. Would you like to get access to exclusive content as well as being part of a community of like-minded people posting, sharing, and connecting on a deeper level? Come join the Inspired Community on Locals where we share more intimately and privately and do our Coffee and Truth live streams as well as our Honey Talks show, the only Inspired show with Christine Nolan. The Inspired Community is absolutely uncensored and unfiltered, a place for truth, authenticity, and freedom. Join us now at inspired.locals.com or click on a link in the video description.